Welcome back to the studio. So today we are painting Olivia Austin roses from the garden. May and June is the opportune time to do that. You get a nice little variety of roses at different stages so that they'll make an interesting composition. So I am painting this on a um, Raymar linen, double prime linen panel and I did a wash of white um, ultramarine blue, titanium white, ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, and transparent red oxide. And just a combination of those. In some places it has more blue, in some places it has more um, yellow ochre, and so forth. Um, and it really doesn't matter. I'm just wanting a base on it. And But mostly it's a, it, like I said, it's a wash with um, Gamsol and then you just take a paper towel and you kind of rub it all over your painting and try to get um, different colors in there. Now we are starting um, just trying to figure out our composition by um, figuring out what we want where. And um, I, later on I ended up changing this somewhat and so some of this will be a lesson on how I um, or maybe, you know, it's just how you already do it, but how I um, fix my mistakes. So for my roses, it's mostly trans, it's mostly ultra, um, I'm sorry, um, titanium white with a little bit of rose deep from Old Holland. And for my shadows, I tend to use um, either cobalt or ultramarine, depending on how cool, cool or how warm I want that. Um, usually if you go for cobalt, it'll be a, a cooler um, shadow. If you go for ultramarine blue, I find that to be a little bit more on the red side, so a little bit warmer. Um, and so I use that for my deeper or darker areas. Um, some shadows you'll see on light colored roses, they tend to be more um, greenish, just slightly green, and some tend to be slightly on the purple side. Um, and that helps me determine to use either cobalt or ultramarine. Um, so right now I'm starting the center, but as you're noticing, it kind of looks like eyeballs there in the center, and they are too... Um, too close to the same size and too close to the same shape so I change that somewhat later on change the direction of them they're going in the same direction like I've also um, that's one of those things that you know uh, that that first day sometimes I don't see it and then the, I, I come and look at it later on and I'm like oh my goodness that looks like a face or that looks like eyeballs and it bothers me and so on you know you change it but that's the neat thing about oil paints is that it's very easy to um, to make those changes and you either just add a lot more paint or you scrub some of it off and just start all over again um, but the neat thing is that you'll still have that hint of what you had there before so you you have a starting point I've mentioned before that for my greens I use if I want you know that that bright green that you think of as a kid of the color of leaves then you use ultramarine blue and cadmium cadmium yellow and if you want it to be a little bit on the warmer side though more natural looking then we start to play with either a little bit of yellow ochre um, to kind of warm it up just a tiny bit or if you want to warm it up a lot um, and actually often I add um, transparent red oxide just because it gives it that under that that more natural leaf color kind of more olivey in some leaves you'll see that they're more on the blue side um, and so whenever I notice that they're a little bit more on the blue side um, I add a little bit of black and it's always a good idea to add both of those colors because they are the underlying colors of leaves and so you you get those much natural greens um, for your leaves and it'll just be a play on that but I start with those colors I don't add yellow uh, white yet um, I start with those yellows um, those that ultramarine blue that yellow ochre and a touch of black um, 
and I only add white as um, I'm starting to lighten those leaves. But my darkest colors are not going to have that, and I don't want it there at the beginning. Now, by the time this video ends, I've spent about five and a half hours on this painting. If you notice, the video is not that long. So I cut some areas where there was just a lot of the same thing happening, a lot of going back and forth between making something lighter, making something darker, moving things around a little bit. Um, so I cut some of those areas and I also um, sped it up so that it wouldn't take forever. But we are, um, I said, I'm still playing with um, where I want everything at this at this point and and what I want my subject to be I decide you know like oh that has way too many leaves I don't need those many leaves um I'm not worrying about uniting colors just yet for those different shapes um, but later on you'll see that I am if I see oh that's a bunch of leaves I don't they're all the same hue they're all the same value so I don't want to go in there and you know individually draw those leaves it's just gonna look like a, an odd shape representing those three leaves in that that color or that value and so usually my background is just that it's just like oh round about some leaf shapes and I unite those leaf shapes to create a um, a background now every once in a while if I the, your background is going to affect a lot of how you see the painting itself so if my background is really really dark um, my flowers are going to come forward a lot and it's going to give you some drama uh, but I want it more of a hazy kind of rainy or grayish day sort of look um, and so I you know I want it closer to to the color of the, of the flowers or in that same um, value not necessarily the same color but just the value your how light or dark something is Once I have a general idea as to the placement of things, of, of the different objects, how many of them I want, where I want them, how big you know they are in comparison to one another, I start trying to figure out where my lightest lights are and my darkest darks. Um, but first is where I see my most saturation. And in this case, in the case of the roses, it tends to be in the center of the roses. Um, and I really like using, um, if my roses tend to be a little bit more on the red side versus the yellow side, I use more of um, my, that, that rose deep from Old Holland. If I see the roses tend to be a little bit more on the kind of peachy side, then I use a touch of Venetian. Um, and sometimes I use that either case, but that goes a long way as I mentioned before So you want to use it very very sparingly because it will it will just keep seeping into your other colors um, But I do like it where it's needed Now I'm I said I'm trying to figure out where my darkest darks are uh, I'm still painting very very light because I wanted I came back to it this, this the second day and I want it to be kind of tacky I don't want to be swimming in paint and you know I mentioned before like that's a goal of mine is to figure out how to work with thicker paint but I'm not there yet so um, I reserve that for um, later on once I have everything where I want it and I have 
you know, round about the values that I want, um, then I play with that thickness. Um, and, and it does several things. It, it, you know, it puts in that color that you want really quickly so you can cover a lot with it. But also, it um, you can play with it to give you textures that you want to kind of change um, the the temperature of things. So sometimes if you have that warm color out there and you put that that um, that cool color on top, it'll make a big difference. And sometimes you use it for like the edges of things, you know, the edges of leaves or the edges of your surfaces that that your your still life is sitting on or whatever it is. Um, it helps a lot um, to to play with the thickness of the paint. But in general, I like and I like the look of a thin a thin paint. Um, and you know and that, that's that's all preferences it, it's not one's good and one's bad like i said i'd love to to do those thick layers that that i see some artists do um but i know that for me that is very very difficult starting to notice that there's a big hollow area at the bottom of my painting and so it's a good time this is why it's really good to have a, a um, roses at a variety of stages you know whenever you go buy them from the store they all look at the same exact stage um, and so it, it's hard to get an interesting composition that way I mean, you can, obviously you can, um, but for me, I, I like that variety. It makes it look more natural. Um, and then you can play with it a lot more. So if I were to put a huge rose at that bottom, um, it, would, it would be too crowded. So that little bit of brightness um, gives a, a little bit of, of sparkle to that area. It gives it a little bit of interest. Um, and it balances out the, the composition a little bit more, but mostly I didn't want that big hollow area looking in there. Now, some leaves will make a difference, but um, I like that little bit, just that, that touch of color there. So now I'm still um, working on darkening these roses, and um, for that I am using white, and I'm adding transparent red oxide, and um oh this is where i did not like the direction of that rose and so i just scrape it off those scrapers are some of my best friends um now for on a on a panel i can use those um those kind of paint scrapers however if it was a stretch canvas i would not use that I have a kind of round scraper that I used for um, restoration and paint restoration because then um, it doesn't, you know, it won't get, make leave lines in your painting. And even still, you have to be really careful with this. But that's how I remove paint if I'm seeing, oh, it's, it's, there's too, I need to change it way too much to bother layering over it um, I just scrape it off sometimes I take a little bit of gamsol um, and then I you know a paper towel and remove it that way but I don't like to do it so much that way because I'm gonna takes me longer uh, but to sometimes you you get too much of the um, you know the the fine paper um, little particles into your into your painting and I don't like it um, but sometimes in a pinch it'll work uh, the paper towels that I'm using right now my husband got me uh, I usually use Viva but um, he got me these paper towels I guess they use them for you know cleaning the cars and things and um, and so uh, they've been working great and I noticed they last a lot longer than the Viva paper towels so I don't have to keep switching paper towels 
So once I scraped off that rose, the new one that I put in there, I gave it a different shape than the others, um, a little bit smaller, and I kind of separated it out because it was just way too crowded in that center area. Everything was there. And so that gives it a little bit of air. And you'll notice that those negative spaces, it gives you a little bit of breathing room, but it also, um, kind of helps you focus on the individual objects that you have going on and so everything if it's all together it's just like your eyes go there and then that's it and you want your eye to travel around your painting and so it's nice to give it some little bit a little bit of space in between some of them and you don't want to do like even space between everything because that doesn't look very natural. Um, so some of them will be closer together than others. But when you're putting your, your still life together, think about that, about how um, that you need some breathing room there. Just like I don't want all the buds that were in my still life, in, in, in real life, I also don't want all the leaves that were on there. So I pick and choose those leaves that are going to um, heighten my composition. And, um, and those that don't, I just kind of put them together and they'll be part of my background. And so I... Um, I just play with them and I can move them around in my painting. Um, so if I notice there's some areas. Now I do need to work on making areas that are a little bit darker and being more selective about where, um, how much light I put on those leaves because I don't want them to, um, to be as bright as they are in this painting. Even towards the end, I notice that. So it's one of the things that I'm gonna be working on later on, is I'm gonna be working on um, uh, kind of sending some of those leaves towards the back. And even if it's not the whole leaf, portions of the leaves, because right now they look like they're all on a flat plane and um, and sometimes whenever you have a camera in front of you in front of the painting it's kind of hard to to focus on that but it's always something that I need to work on anyways camera or no camera um, but just kind of think about that about making some of the those leaves come from the back and maybe curl out and so only one of the the tips will be on the brighter side but but the where it's receding um, it'll get darker or those leaf shapes that, you know, kind of, it's like three leaves, but they'll be those same, that same value. Well, then you paint it just one odd shape that looks like the shape of the three leaves put together. So now that, um, now that I have my basic ideas to where I want things, now I can come in and really start to add paint and so i'm brightening this up this has cadmium yellow deep and my um, rose rose deep in the center and then i'm also trying to find where my um those edges of my different petals are now i don't want all the petals i just want some to give me the idea as to the direction that the petals are going or the shape of the of the rose. So usually I'm just finding the ones that really stick out the most. Um, I'm not worrying about those um, within the center or those that don't have high contrast.
are the newer leaves on roses, um, the new growth, usually at the top of the roses, um, towards the, the tip of branches, they will be either a bright chartreuse, um, or they will be a little bit more on that Venetian sort of red, that a little bit of deeper red or more on the yellowish side. They're not as deep green as the leaves that are a little bit older are. They don't have as much chlorophyll yet, and so, um, or at least that's my thinking. Um, but yeah, you'll notice that, that, that those new leaves, those smaller leaves, they'll tend to be either brighter, they'll tend to be either more on that bright yellow or chartreuse or a little bit more on the red side. And so pay attention to that because that's going to change depending on your variety of roses. Um, you won't really see this on, you know, like grocery store roses because like I said, they all tend to be the same um, age. Uh, sometimes if you go into a florist, you can ask them for garden roses. Um, even sometimes some of the grocery stores, they reserve some of the garden roses for their brides if, if they're doing bride uh, weddings and things like that. Um, but sometimes they'll sell them to you. And then you'll notice that they have, um, uh, you know, leaves of different shapes. They'll have roses and they'll have rosebuds and all of that gives you things to play with in your composition. You see that there's a lot of white being added at this point. Um, when you see that, I want you to know that it is very rare that I use white or black by itself. And um, both tend to be very distracting when you see them by themselves and they kind of look out of place. Like you think, oh, that is white or that is black. But if you add just a tiny bit of color to it, um, it'll make it look much more natural. So in this case for my roses, if it's on the lighter part, then I add either um, yellow ochre or a little bit of cadmium yellow or um, more likely if it's a pink rose, it'll have a touch of rose deep in it. If it's a little bit towards the shadow side, then it has either cobalt where those petals that stick out, like they're still in the shadow, but they're kind of coming forward a little bit. Those will have a little bit of more cobalt in there um, with a touch of yellow ochre. Um, if they go recede more towards the back, it, um, sometimes it goes more on the red side, so those will be more ultramarine blue with even um, some um, red oxide, transparent red oxide. And so, um, and I know that a lot of artists don't like to talk about, you know, um, color recipes because they, they think that, you know, and rightly, rightly so, is that um, we should be investigating and really looking at it and everything's different and as much as i agree with that i think color recipes are a good jumping off point if i say a leaf is transparent red oxide or i'm sorry if i say a leaf is ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow um once you get that on there, you'll realize that, hey, that doesn't look right. It looks like it needs, it needs to be a little bit more on the red side or it needs to be a little bit more on the, you know, warm side. Um, but you'll see it yourself. And so, but just having that idea of, you know, that'll get me close enough so that 
you can make decisions based on what you're seeing um, of, of the objects in front of you that you're trying to paint. So that's why I share my color and it's not to say a color recipe like that's not what I always do but even as I paint it's a good starting off point for me um, sometimes I even mix my uh, because I paint a lot of the same flowers mostly roses th those roses tend to have those same um, colors in them and so sometimes I pre-mix that I have, I buy just, you know, those empty tubes and I pre-mix it in there. So I allowed my painting to, well, it's not dry, but it's a little bit on the tacky side. The paint's a little on the sticky side, so it doesn't move around as much. And now I am working on refining my painting. And even still, um, even after this, I still changed it. If you notice, there's a lot more space in between that those, those two roses, that one at the top and the one at the bottom. I still wasn't very happy with that, and so I, I scraped some of that off and moved that bottom rose towards the bottom. And in a little bit, you'll see me move um, that other rose. I want it to face a different direction than the, the rose next to it is and I want it a little bit more prominent and so I in real life I moved my rose so that it faces more towards the left and a little bit towards me rather than straight up um, so that you can you can see its face a little bit more the center a little bit better Now, there's not much to it after this, believe it or not. Um, um, at this point, it's a lot of the same, but just back and forth. You know, like, oh, that's too dark, that's too light, or I lighten the background. So um, it, it'll change um, the value or the mood of the painting. And, um, and so it's just a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of layers. And like I said, painting thin um, helps me with that.
and it's to me it's very important that my edges particularly those that are facing the shadows or that are within the shadows that they are blurry and it once again gives it a very natural look it helps things kind of meld together so it doesn't look like a collage that you cut pick you know um pictures out and and put them together and you know you'll see that within some of the um the dutch paintings where they are very clean very tight paintings and so um they it, it makes it look very um a little bit more on the cartoony side um not necessarily cartoony as in the details but it just makes it look less natural and more drawn versus painted now some of them do that less and um, a lot of that was because they were studies you know you were meant to focus on those individual objects i don't want you to focus on individual objects i want to set a mood um, and I want it to be, uh, it, it's not a study per se, um, on the individual species of the flowers. It's the look that, um, that I'm seeking. So this is, it's a lot of blending in and pushing that paint around. Um, and this will help also because it'll give some of that back color into your objects and that gives them that kind of sets them in into that, that painting
to play with my leaves too much at the beginning. I reserve that for the ends because I don't use my leaves as the focus. They're just there to help out, kind of like, you know, supporting characters. And so, um, so if I don't put a lot of leaves in there, then they just don't need to be in there. And, um, you know, it, it won't change a lot of that composition, but it does give it depth. It gives it interest in those areas where your eye just needs a, a breather, sort of. You know, without it looking like one big area of dark paint. space is just as important as the objects itself because they are what makes the the objects stand out um so use that you know often think about you know not crowding things in um giving a little bit of room sometimes even just that tiny bit of background um, in the midst of your your objects makes a big difference so that tiny bit of green in between you know a bunch of, of roses um, gives it a little bit of depth using very limited white when it came to my background um, especially because my background is so dark and so I don't like it to get muddy and there's no need for it at this point and so now that I know where my leaves are I define them a little bit more I know the direction that they're coming from how they curl um, how they overlap all that now I can start using a little bit of light you know a little bit of cadmium yellow or a little bit of titanium white or more yellow ochre in order to um, to support that to allow them to come forward or to look like they're overlapping or to find their edges you know um, at this point, even whenever I finish this video and I look at the painting, I put it in a frame and I thought those wrote, those leaves are way too busy. You know, like I said, I need them to be supporting actors. I don't need them to stand out and give me so much texture. So this is where blurring out of the edges comes in. This is where some um, layering of paint or even some um glaze work comes in to kind of make those be a little bit more subtle um you know and, and recede into the background i still want to see that interest that they offer but i don't want them to stick out as much um but 
however I do want some so this is like I said where the white comes in um, where those yellow ochres and cadmium yellows um, will help with that brighten some areas or lighten them give us some highlights a little bit now whenever it starts to get to the bottom you'll see that leaves tend to be a little bit more either on the blue side or the transparent red oxide and so they you know the stems get a little darker they um, the leaves get a little darker and um, and so you'll start to see that more towards the center or the back or the bottom the, uh, the bottom of your of the, the rose bushes or um, rose stems and, and some of that you'll see in the, more in some varieties of roses than others now later on I said I do want to do a video on how we um, you know of, of discovering um, of allowing us to play with those edges blurring out is very very important um, when you want to create mood and so um, so it's one of those things that I think you know if I just sit there and I focus on okay why am I blurring this out versus that out or you know how much to blur it out or you know do I um, there's certain things that I'll blur out towards the 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 background and other times where the background comes into that object and darkens that object so we'll address all that on a different um, video right now I felt like there was a lot of things that I mentioned on here and some of it tends to be kind of repetitive um, like I said it's just a lot of back and forth I hope that it helps I hope that if you have any questions um, please leave them in the comments I'm always learning from other people I did not go to school to paint um, I was a metal smith in school and so I did um, sculpture and um, and so it's I had to learn to paint on my own and in order to do that and I, I I say that halfway because really I learned by watching videos like this I learned by reading books I learned by trial and error and there's something to be said about having a teacher but um, you know I always kind of like it was easier for me to just go in the studio and just paint my little heart out it gave me a break you know I, I taught all day and so um, so it was a way for me to to um, to learn and to relax at the same time. But I do feel like had I had some, you know, um, critique, some <laughs> feedback from somebody who knew how to paint, I would have taken care of a lot of some of my troubles early on. Um, so it took me a lot longer to learn those lessons than it takes, you know, uh, um, people who take classes. But I feel like I, I self-edited. And in that aspect, you know, I was learning from all these different artists um, in my own way and deciding what was going to work for me and what wasn't without somebody saying, hey, you know, do you really want to go in that direction? But look what I do, you know. Um, so, you know, there, there's just something to say. Like, you know, I just picked up stuff here and there. Um, but I, I do sometimes wish it, that I would have at least, you know, gone to some of those artists that I admire so much and um, had some crucial critiques that would have really helped me out. I did at the end... Um, um, Elizabeth Robbins um, did a critique and it was very helpful and I think it was one of those things that it was stuff that I knew but it's different when somebody really like mm, I don't know that's not looking right but you know that'll work um, but she really you know it was hearing it from somebody else that kind of sticks 
like, hey, remember what she told you. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those critiques. Um, and you know, that I, I, I felt like it was, it was plenty of food to, um, to help me address some of the issues that I was having. So it was very, very sweet of her to do that for me. Um, and, and it wasn't free. It was part of the, um, I guess the membership that they have that you get a critique. I don't remember. It, it was about, it was a couple of years ago. Um, so at any rate, um, I, and I'm sure she still does it. So if you're interested in critique or if you're interested in, um, you know, watching those videos, I am sure there's plenty of wonderful things that we could all learn from them. painting worked out for the most part I know where my objects go about the, the you know the value that they're going to be um, and I've refined their shapes a little bit more now I can really refine the color of my background so I always have it out there just to help me um, you know because you're not you know, a painting is not just the object. The painting is the entire thing. So that background is part of your painting. And um, so I always want to see how it's going to relate to the objects. But I'm not worrying about it being exact yet. And because my objects are going to be going back and forth so much that I don't want to be doing that to my background too. So I get an approximately at the beginning... And I try not to mess with it too much because I don't want too much layering. Um, I put it on there to help me cut out my shapes or carve out my shapes. And to help me, you know, get an, a, a kind of ballpark of, of what it's going to look like. Um, and then once I have everything exactly where I want it, now I can play with that color a little bit more and decide what I want it to be. Now, in this case, I want it to look a little bit more like kind of a, a foggy, kind of hazy, um, you know, summer day. Not a hot Oklahoma summer day. Somewhere where it rains. <laughs> Somewhere where you can get some, um, a little bit more of moisture in the air. Although we've been surprisingly having a lot of those lately. But that's that's the focus now is trying to um, to to get that that background in and I want I don't want it a, a solid color so uh, unfortunately sometimes on video you it's hard not to get a subtlety mm -hmm. but um, that's one of the things that I want for the background is I want some areas 
where it's a, a tiny bit more blue, some areas where it's a tiny bit more yellow ochre or more, you know, a little bit more on the red side, but it's just barely a change. It's enough to give it interest so that it doesn't look like you just, you know, it's a kind of cut out background, um, that it's a little bit more natural that it's not too much where you're gonna see spots of reds or spots of yellows. getting towards the end of the painting I start um, focusing on some detail now I don't want my details to be the focus but I do want them um, to kind of bring so that your painting doesn't just look like one solid area of of roses or whatever you know that it it kind of reaches out towards that background and so that's why those are important. It also helps you get your eye in different directions. So you can move your eye around depending on the, the shapes of the objects that you put back there. And you can play with that, you know, to kind of guide that person in, in sort of like a circle around your painting so that they can continue to look at it. Did, did and redid these three uh, leaves but they were just not looking right they were looking sometimes like eyes and I just kept going back and forth and changing it and um, and uh, you know it's just a lot of that so don't don't be scared about you know just taking paint off or sometimes just the easiest thing now these leaves one of them was facing towards the back so it just looked like a little line if i looked at it and i kept trying to get the, at any rate it, it was not working for me um so i ended up and, and i think part of that it was way too big for that that area um but also they they were too much of the same color and um and in order to help it, I later on just made one of them lighter and gave definition to the other um, so that they didn't, it just didn't look odd. For even at this point, I think they look like, you know, like maybe eyes. I, I don't know. Uh, they just made me uncomfortable. <laughs> and so. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it just surprises me that the things that, that you know, you find um, give you a little bit of a struggle. Um, and for whatever reason, it was these three little leaves on this painting.
start to see how I was going a little overboard with my lightning of leaves and I was going all across the board lightning leaves and it was just not working out um, so now I'm gonna have to go back and like I said blur out some of those edges darken some areas and um, give it some actual depth now here there's a lot of decision making at this point because some of those leaves on the edges do not exist um, you know that I you just make them up as you need them um, but you you know you could leave that all dark or you could leave that all light like the color of your background um, the top of it um, but this is where a lot of editing you know takes place and um, this is one of those things that require um, some specifics in order to discuss it in, in this case, it's very hard because I don't have anything to compare it to, but just know that, that those leaves were not there. You know, this was not outside. It was a selective amount of leaves in a vase. And, um, and then, you know, from a photo that I had taken. And so, um, so I decided, oh, you know, it needs some leaves to make it look like um, I'm painting this out, that it's being painted from you know nature from it being in the garden not cut and brought inside and photographed and so um so in order to do that i have these leaves i just make leaves or paint on leaves some of them are receding um some of them are just dark areas in the background and you can't really they're not really defined they don't um they're just little you know um well background and so um that's one of the other things we'll we'll address later on i said if you have you know there's specific things that you'd like to discuss i'm still learning lots um you know i think i mentioned before i'm a proud novice in that i feel like there's so much more that i have to learn that i haven't learned um as much as of experience that i have um I think there's a lot more that I don't know that, than what I do know. And I love that because it means that I think there's so much room for growth. Thank you. 
light areas of leaves. Um, like I mentioned before, they have a little bit more of, the cad of cadmium or white. But this is also where you see the gray within those leaves um, because um, you'll see that the highlights are more of a blue gray. Um, sometimes Viridian is perfect for this because Viridian is a little bit more on the teal side. And so just a touch of Viridian um, with some yellow ochre or a, a tiny bit of, um, of transparent red oxide along with some white makes really nice highlights for your leaves. And um, so you can play a little bit with that and consider, you know, making it a little bit more on the gray side versus um, bright green or, or white. that I want to change a little bit is that a lot of my roses I notice are um, even though they're facing different directions they're tilting in too much of that same area so I want them to look more like hey I'm seeing the side of the rose I'm seeing the, the face of the rose I'm seeing you know it's tilting a little bit um, and at this point I have them way too much tilted, um, just somewhat towards, you know, towards the viewer. So I want to change, and I'll go back and I'll change at least one of them, and that makes a big difference, um, so that they don't all look that like they're going in that same, you know, uh, tilted in that same degree. This painting needs still quite a bit more starting with those leaves that I said look too uniform in shape and size, some of them in, in value. So I need to work on that. I need to refine some of my shapes of the roses and work on my shadows a little bit more so that they kind of recede into uh, that background. But for now, I'd like to tell you thank you if you stuck around this time. If you're subscribed, thank you so much. If you have not, please um, consider subscribing and, um, you know, hitting that like button um, and sharing. If you have any questions or comments or have something that I, you know, I did not address or you think you, you address it in a different way, please let me know. I always, you know, like I said, there's plenty of room for me. I have so much to learn. 
And so, um, and not just for me, but for those who are reading the comments um, to help them out too. So I said, I'll live with this painting for a little bit longer in the end, um, do some editing later on before finishing it off and putting it into that beautiful antique frame. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you again. Happy painting.